all right you guys we are now part three of weeping angels y'all i'm gonna try my best to do this series in six parts i really am okay so um sorry i'm looking at i just put some serum on my face so girl we don't know what's going on um by the way i use the ordinary serums if you if anyone's interested the ordinary and good molecules i have a separate video on my skin routine girl get to the <laughs> Get to the dang on story. Part three. We'll decide to visit the gold. I think the Goldbergs girl. Goldstein. Let's do Goldstein. Goldstein. Mildred Goldstein, who is 72 years old, lives in the top floor with her husband. And they actually own the brownstone that the bakers live in. So Willow approaches the door, knocks on the door. Mrs. Goldstein looks at her and smiles, doesn't even blink an eye and say, hi, Willow, I've been expecting you. Why don't you go ahead and come in? So Willow follows Mrs. Goldstein into her apartment. It just occurred to Willow that she hasn't been up there um, in their apartment in a very long time, years, matter of fact. And so um, she sits down on a love seat across from Mrs. Goldstein and Willow's like, how did you know I was coming? And Mrs. Goldstein is like, now Willow, do you really, you really want to ask me that? Do you really want to know the answer? And Willow shook her head without saying anything. And she's like, well, dear, the reason why I knew you were coming is that I've been using my cards ever since the man uh, moved in a couple of days ago. I've been using my cards to instead read you guys. And, this, and I purposely picked you. I'm glad that you came up because honestly, the decisions that you make within the next three months will determine everything for the rest of your life. And Willow kind of looks at her and her heart starts, starts racing. And so Mildred, can she can tell that she's interested but scared. And so that's when Mildred kind of leans in a little bit closer. She's like, Willow, there's nothing to be afraid of. I can stop or I can go ahead and tell you what the cards have been telling me about your future. And so Mildred's like, I've been getting two cards for you every time. Love and Mildred heart skips, sorry, Willow's heart skips a beat and she smiles. She's like, well, hold on, love and I've been getting death. And Willow's like, well, what does that mean? She's like, well, it could mean several things. It could mean, it may not necessarily mean someone close to you but it would definitely be someone that you know and so willow's concerned and she's like what am i going to do and so mildred said you really can't do anything what's in the cards most of the time comes comes forth um willow but this is just for a cautionary and so mildred's just like just be careful those young girls that are coming up missing they haven't found anything they no one knows what's going on so just please be careful willow and so willow looks at her and she gets up and she walks out the door and so that's what mildred basically wanted to tell her that she's been re since she can't get a reading on girl what's his name is his name brian michael since she since she can't get a reading on michael she's been reading willow not the other girls but willow since she's the eldest um with Mildred, she would prefer to read the eldest because typically they are the stronger ones. So she reads the older sibling. So anyway, Willow is a little bit depressed after hearing that. And so she goes down and she goes back to the shop so willow goes back to the store right to their shop and so violet is like where did you go and so willow explained to her what happened this entire time violet mouth is like open she tells willow you know what willow i wouldn't believe anything that crazy old woman says but willow cuts her off she's like but violet she said that her cards are never wrong so I'm so, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to expect. I mean, <laughs> Violet said, well, I know one thing. Mama did not find out you went up there. Uh, so anyway, you guys, they just continue working at the shop. And their father, Tony, comes back. And he's like, all right then, girls. Why don't you go ahead and go home? Um, I'll wrap up for the rest of the day. And so they look at their father and they notice that he looked a little dirty. And that's when Willow was like, Daddy, are you okay? He's like, Yeah, I'm fine. And she's like, Well, why are you look what what have you been doing? You know, I'm you know, Violet told me that every other weekend now you're leaving for a couple of hours. What's going on? And so, um, Tony looks at her, the father looks at her and says, He said, Nothing's nothing's wrong. You know, I'm just and then he like sat alongside. He's like, Well, Truth be told, girls, Violet and Willow are there. 
Truth be told, girls, is that I've been trying to make a little bit extra money by doing construction work. Violet was like, Daddy, are you serious? You know, so both you and Mama are working two jobs. What's the point of having this shop then if y'all both have to work two jobs? And the daddy shakes his head. He said, I don't know. I don't know. But I thank you, girls. You know, thank you so much. Why don't you go ahead and go home? So the girls go ahead and they leave, right? Back to the shop, the daddy picks up the phone. The father dials a number. We don't know who he's calling. And so he's listening, listening, waiting for the phone to ring. Finally, the person answered the phone. He's like, what took you so long? This is Tony, the father. What took you so long, man? And the person on the other end was like, well, you know, uh, things got a little rough and I had to take care of things. And that's when Tony was like, what do you mean take care of things? And the person on the other end is like, well, you know what I mean. And so Tony face darkens, he's upset. And so he's like, you know what? You need to finish up what you're doing and you need to come out here as soon as possible. And the person hangs up the phone. All right, you guys, we don't know what's going on there. Finish up whatever you're doing and make your way out here. Almost like this person is out of town. They don't live in their same town in Chicago, okay? So cut over to the family. They have dinner, they go to bed. Now we're gonna trickle on a couple of more days, you guys. So um, every now and then, Michael comes into the store and, um make small talk with willow and willow y'all willow is very cautious ever since she got these you know this reading from mildred she doesn't even know what to expect so one afternoon the twins come in after school and so willow's like hey twins i thought you guys um had a competition a chess competition and the twins are like no we don't want to do that we can beat them anyway and so willow kind of smiles and so that's when one of the twins jasmine she's like i'm sorry you guys jasmine's like okay so did you hear and so Willow's like, what do you mean? And Jasmine said, another girl has gone missing. And Willow's heart sank. Jasmine said, and it was Sharon. And Willow's like, Sharon from down the street? Sharon was a neighborhood girl that they knew you guys. She's like 19 years old. So Jasmine was like, yeah, Sharon, her and her boyfriend, they went to go catch a movie. And so she was supposed to walk back home and she never made it back home after the movie. And Willow was like, well, do they know anything? Did the, did the cops know anything that you know, possibly could have taken her? The, the twins shook their head no at the same time. And then that's when Jasmine said, but they're thinking that it has to do with those other two girls that went missing. So Willow is a, a little nervous now, you guys. And so she tells the twins, well, why don't you guys sit in the back and stay here until daddy comes back. And then I'll, we'll all walk back home together. Because typically the twins are okay to walk home together by themselves. But Jasmine is, you know, sorry, Willow is too afraid to allow them to walk home. Um, even though it's two of them. So anyway, you guys, the father comes. And so by the look of uh, Willow's face, he's, he knows that she is aware of Sharon being missing. And so he's like, so you heard about Sharon? And she's like, yeah, daddy, I can't believe Sharon. So the daddy comes in um, and Willow walks the twins home and uh, gets home. And she, so Willow walks the twins home and she walks into the door. She's like, mama, are you here? And you know, what is her name, y'all? Why didn't come out? She's like, yeah, I'm here. And yeah, I heard about Sharon. Um, it's sad. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to go down to her mama's and send her something to eat, you know. So we just got to pray for them. Me and the church sisters, we're praying for everybody, actually. So you girls, make sure from now on that no one walks by themselves, okay? You guys buddy, buddy up. Twins, you guys buddy up. And the twins shake their head, yes, together. They always buddy up anyway. So anyway, that's the game plan. So Willow goes into her room and she sees that Violet is already there. Violet, just, Violet is just laying on her bed. And so Willow's like, Violet, what's wrong with you? And so Violet lays up in bed and she looks at Willow. Violet's like, if I tell you something, you promise you're going to tell mama and daddy. And so Willow's like, yeah, what's going on? And so Violet kind of looks down at her hand. She's like, I drop out of nursing school. Willow's like, what? Violet shakes her head. She's like, I know, I dropped out of nursing school. And Willow's like, so what have you been doing all this time? And so Violet's like, I've been hanging out with Gerald. And Violet's like, what do you mean hanging out with Gerald? She's like, just that I've been hanging out with Gerald, you know, and I know, I know I should have said something sooner, but I don't know what I'm going to do. And so Willow's like, why don't you just go back to school? I mean, you're only 20 years old. Just go back. I'm pretty sure they could take you back. And, but Violet's like, there's no way I can catch up. You know, I've been out. I haven't 
been back in like two months and Willow is surprised that she has been faking the funk, putting on her little uniform or whatever they were to nursing school and just been faking it, Willow putting on her scrubs and been faking it and pretending like she's going to nursing school and all this time she's been hanging out with her little fiance Gerald and so Willow's like, all right, but you're going to have to tell them. You're going to have to tell them sooner or later. And so Val is like, I know. So I guess you heard about Sharon. And so Willow shook her head. She said, I know. I, I did. This is sad. Like, we got to be careful. And Violet shook her, shook her head in agreement. So Y'all, a couple of more days go by. We're picking up because I want this to only be six parts. A couple more days go by. And so Willow is working at the shop. As usual, she sees Michael come in. And Michael's looking a little, like frazzled and she's like hey Michael what's going on you know he gets him something out of the cooler he's like I'm okay just been a little stressed lately and so she's like you know you never told me what you did you know what do you do at what do you do for a living and he looks there he's and he kind of looks at her he wasn't sure if he wanted to say anything and that's when he said actually I'm a detective and she's like what you're a detective yeah, he shook his head slowly He's like, yes, I'm a detective. Um, while I was in Texas, I was um, put on this task force that looked into serial killers. And she's like, serial killers? Now you guys, this is the 70s, late 70s. A serial killer, all of that is relatively new. I mean, people have been killing a lot of people for a long time, but to find someone who actually was killing women or men or whoever, and actually had a motive and a type and all bigger. I don't know the terminology. That's new. It's actually a very new um, part of detectivism or whatever you want to call it. So Michael was a part of this task group that they had formed down in Texas because there were killings, similar killings going on in Texas and um, just certain parts of the South. So when these girls found out, so when these girls were coming up missing in Chicago, the task force flew him out there and that's what he's been doing. So now that this third girl has been missing, they are confident that it's a serial killer. So he's like, yeah. So she's like, so you were sent up here to work on this case where these girls are missing? He's like, yeah, and things just got worse. And she's like, what do you mean? And he looked at her, again, not sure if he should say anything, but he's like, they just found the bodies of the first two girls that went missing. And Willow's like, shocked. All right, you guys, that's part three.